Would you ever, in this relationship or another relationship, give your partner an ultimatum? <laughs> um, in terms of marriage and stuff like that? Sure. It could be in terms of anything. Mm. What the f- is going on? I like to party. Jesus, honey, wax much? This is Unwaxed. Get in, Lizzie. We're going shopping. With Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Did we just become best friends? Yep. I know. You see. Somehow, somehow the world. I didn't try to harm it. I tried a little bit. Why'd you stop? Somehow the world, world will change for me and be so wonderful. wonderful. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to a new episode of the Unwaxed Podcast with your favorite sisters, Sophia and Sistine. You're messing up this whole intro. Well, right that now. was you. That part was you. You said your own, my name for your own name. I don't know why. Because you waited. Well, do I automatically have the first sister name in the series? Like, usually we can go Sistine and Sophia Stallone, but apparently. I think you have airplane brain. I don't have an airplane. Well, I did just land from LA and I'm in Florida. As you guys can see, we're back in our Palm Beach studio. And you know that we were doing this for a bit during quarantine. And now it's just become ritual whenever we're in town. Yeah, I kind of like it here. It's a nice change of vibe. Mm-hmm. It's a nice energy. We're trying to get our tan on. We mm-hmm. love coming to Florida. We feel like it really just resets our whole body. The humidity does wonders for our hair, for our skin. Mm-hmm. Sophia, you're going to need it. You're looking a little pale, a little crusty right now. But me, I'm glowing. You're just a horrible person. I feel like every roast, every single episode, every roast. But yeah, I do actually need a little bit of a tune up because I don't think California does too well on my body. I don't think it does it well on anybody. It's dry. It gets honestly also the weather has been hot and cold every other day. It's changed. It's been 100 degrees and then also it turns so into let's, 60. Let's answer the question that I'm sure the listeners are wondering. Sistine, why were you in Florida? And Sophia, why were you still in LA? Any particular reason? Oh, yeah. I met uh, the boyfriend's family, which is dun, dun, dun. Well, it was it was more of like a jam packed weekend. He was coming into town and that was just part of it. But it was really fun. It went well. I was nervous, as you guys know, from last episode, but I didn't do like a show and pony dance, which I normally usually do. I was myself and it worked. Thank God. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing more nerve wracking. This is such a huge step in a new relationship is meeting your significant other's family because on your end, you're saying, okay, I want everything to go right. I want the mom to like me. I want the siblings to like me. The dad, I feel like the dad is always the easiest person I to get along with. said that before. With. They're just the chillest ones mm-hmm. always in every family. But I made sure to tell Sophia, I was like, you're so forward and out there. And we have a bad habit of you know, sort of throwing it all on the table, trying to say and do Mm -hmm. anything to get people to like us. And sometimes that comes off as trying too hard and we don't want to give the wrong impression that way. So I just said, play it cool. You have a bad habit of when it's silent, you feel the need to fill the silence with words. I didn't. That's the good thing. I didn't fill the silence because, you know, it's also when you're coming into a new home, you don't want to, they have a routine, they have a a, a chat that they normally have with each other and I want to make sure that I'm not just like overwhelming the situation because I'm a new body in there. But overall, it was good. We went golfing and he is a really good golfer. He's not a golfer, but he is a really great golfer. Which and makes I, it so much worse. Yeah. Because... Why? Wait, why? <laughs> why is it worse? Okay. I was like, wait, yeah. No. Because that means him and I'm assuming his whole family has been playing for a really long time. So if you go in there and Sophie and I always brag about being good golfers when well, you know we're okay we don't play that much we know we're pretty good I, he we, was impressed we talk a bigger game than we really have and then now it's time to showcase your skills and if you flop it is so embarrassing i i 50 flopped Ooh. It, the other 50 percent, i killed it but the problem is is like we're Wait, not consistent with it how bad did you flop not bad i honestly had the problem was and this is a good excuse was I actually tweaked my back before. And so I couldn't really do a lot of twisting, but I also have another excuse is I haven't played for a couple months. So she's I, like back injury. I can't I know. You know. And then he was saying the same thing and he goes and crushes it. Like there was probably not one shank at all. It was perfect. So what were you wearing on the golf course? <laughs> this is the worst part was when he uh, told me that we were going to go golfing in the morning. Yeah. I thought 
all my golf clothes are in Florida because that's all I usually just golf in Florida. I don't golf in LA without my dad. And so I had to piecemeal things together. So I wore my running shoes, Mm. my Lululemon, like kind of weird sweatpants, but not sweatpants. And then my one collared shirt. That sounds exactly like a golf outfit. Yeah. It didn't look that cute. I definitely did not. I was not the cute girl. I wasn't the cute golfer girl that every boy fantasizes about. I was definitely You did what I didn't do. I was like the caddy. No, you were conservative (laughs) where I literally looked like a bar cart girl. No, you looked cute. I wanted to be the bar My cart girl. My skirt was so short. Way too short to wear in front of the parents. Like, that's bad. I was wearing a Dodgers hat. It was not. So what? You guys know. It, it looked a little funky, but it did the job, thankfully. And we were out there for a bit. But it was a fun um, weekend. And uh, we were already a month into our relationship, which has been nice. And so you still like the kid? Yeah, I really like him. That's good. Wow. That's good. That's good. That's good. Wow. What have you been doing here? Well, no, I'm not done talking no, about you. No, I don't want to keep talking about it. <laughs> so, Sophia, I'm basically Dr. Phil. So you're one month in. Do you feel like you already know this person? Are you excited to explore more about them? What's something about this individual that you would love to conquer and get to know in month two? Oh my God. That's like such an intense. I honestly I'm like playing with my She's fat. so nervous. I, I know. It's weird. I I you know, it's kind of interesting because we're open about talking about relationships when we're single. Oh yeah. And it's really easy. But when you're in one, it's almost like I want to gatekeep it. And I, I, I'm open to telling you guys about stuff so that maybe you can learn from me. But it's I have this instinct where you just want to not say anything and almost like still not jinx it. And it sounds weird to say that, but I don't know if anyone else can relate to that when it comes to a new thing. But what I can say is that what I felt that this was different from other relationships that I've been in and already month one was that I am unshamefully myself and he can be too and it's really warm and it's comfortable and I think that that was something I didn't realize I really needed until I got into this and so I mean I I don't I just I feel like I I've been seeing him for a lot longer and I think that's also another sign that that's a great thing right you know Did you know that 75 to 90% of all doctor visits are for stress-related issues? Many of us are operating on survival mode, expecting our skin, bodies, and mind to thrive when we are running on empty. We want to change this reality, so we really love this new Purpose Live California-based hemp CBD startup, Prima. They are dedicated to helping you rise above any modern-day stress so every day is a little better. With their doctor-formulated, clinically-validated, high-performance products for the skin, body, and mind. So if you're not sure where to start, try Prima's The Daily CBD Capsules to help relieve stress. If you're in need of a restful night's sleep or waking up groggy in the morning, Sleep Tight will give you that best sleep you've been dreaming about. Lucky for us, Prima is offering our listeners an exclusive limited time 20% off offer with the code UNWAX. So head to Prima.co with code UNWAX to receive that limited time 20% off offer to get that relief you deserve so you can feel better every day. We all want that. You actually came up with a really interesting, I don't even know what you would call it, but you said you came up with this in a dream and you were just saying that this is what you should look for in a relationship. And there was no context tied to it. There was no No. individual situation that Sophie and I have been through that made her come up with this, but it was really profound. And I think you should share it. Yeah. And I wanted to say it on the last episode, but because we're talking about relationships, why not bring it up? And I came to Sistine and I mentioned how I was you know, when you have, you're either in your shower, you're on a walk or whatever you're doing, you just start to think about things. That's probably your most inspired. It's oh, usually yeah. when I walk. Shower thoughts are yeah. so genius. Yeah. I, I think I'm Mozart in the shower. Yeah, exactly. You you start to think about everything you could have said, what you need to do, what you're passionate about. And for me, it's on a walk. And mm-hmm. so basically on my walk, I had this weird image materialized in front of me where I pictured me standing just solo by myself. And suddenly it wasn't even a specific person, but they stood behind me and they were just standing behind me and then they disappeared and then they popped up in front of me and their back was facing me. So it's just like almost like you're standing in a line. And then that person turned around and looked at me. So it was just kind of like three different positions, the same person just popping up in different ways. And I was thinking about why that popped up in my head. And 
Sissy and I have been talking for this past month about relationships and things and like what what's important and what you need to focus on when you're in a relationship and the questions you need to ask yourself about how this person is a part of your life now and how they can actually manifest as something better or is it something worse? And so I thought, okay, maybe this is kind of interesting. And I thought about how when you're in a relationship and you're questioning a lot of things and you don't know whether or not this is the right one or whether or not this person is the best person for you, I kind of thought about that image that was popping up on my walk. And I thought, okay, maybe I need to ask myself these three questions. And if I can't say yes to all three, and I can only say yes to one or two, then I really need to rethink this person that I'm going to be spending 99% of my time with. And because when you're in a relationship, it's a lot of energy. Yeah. So this is the three questions to get into it. And it's going to be quick. When the guy was standing behind me, this version, I thought, okay, if I want a man to be behind me, he would be my cheerleader. He would honor me. He'd be my support system and push us or push me to like be the best version I can be. Just be that support that I need. And then when this person's standing in front of me, like he's standing in a line, would he fight for me? Would he defend me? Would he always root, like go after everything with me and for me? And then when he turned around and looked at me, did he love me for every single one of my flaws, does he look at me with adoration, no matter how high of highs or lows of lows you have. And I think that that's really important when you're in a relationship and you're questioning things is, does this person do those three things? Do they fight for me? Do they honor me? Do they protect me? Do they support me? And do they completely and undoubtedly love me for everything that I am? And if you can't say yes to the front or you can't say yes to him being in the back or you can't say yes to him looking at you at one of those, then you really need to rethink your relationship. And so I I thought that I know that sounds pretty profound and a little bit serious, but I think a lot of people never know how to approach those type of situations. You know, that was deep. Yeah. We should put that on a T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah, just like <laughs> well, we should we should trademark this as your thing. So what are we calling it? It's kind of funny because I I called it BFA because I thought behind front and at me, but that's also Bachelors a, of Performing Arts. Yeah, that's the thing. But it's a BFA <laughs> is Bachelor of Performing Arts. Why do we call it Sophia's spell? Yeah, Sophia's three question spell. Uh, yeah. So if you guys are in that situation and you don't know whether or not this person is for you and the right person. And you don't know whether or not you should move on or stay in it. Ask yourself those three questions. If this person can be in front of you, behind you and looking right at you. I love that. Well, let me ask you this. Would you ever in this relationship or another relationship give your partner an ultimatum? (laughs) Um, In terms of marriage and stuff like that? Sure. It could be in terms of anything. Mm, I think if I got to a certain point in the relationship where I thought that there needs to be a next step, yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. we're that's hardballing now. Hard, that's what, what we do. Say, hardballing. Well, I randomly clicked on this new Netflix show and I thought I had to share it because we, we love how much we watch TV here. And it's called uh, The Ultimatum. Duh. Mm-hmm. And basically it's these couples that are dating for one to three years and either the guy or the girl in the couple is giving them an ultimatum. Yeah. And it's sort of like Temptation Island, which was interesting. So they say, say if the guy's like, I want the marriage and the girl says, I don't want the marriage. They split up for three weeks, have the opportunity to date the other couples that the they're in ultimatums. Yeah, has yeah. split up. And if they find love with someone else that's been in a relationship for a few years, then they can go and be with that person or say yes to marriage right on the spot. I've been watching it too because it's been popping up all over my feed. <sighs> it's I don't it's crazy. Intense. By the way, like I thought that I thought that Temptation Island was pretty bad. I think this is some t- a little worse. It's a little worse because one, it's marriage is a contract. And let's be real, in the United States, 50% of marriages end in divorce. So you got to really be confident with the person yeah. that you're going to marry. And if you got to be on a TV show to figure that out, I think you have your answer. No, but I, I, what I think is the worst part is that the couples are in this because they wanted to get married. And the fact that they're about to see their almost fiance 
hitting it off with someone else that their other almost fiance is watching as well. It's just, it's, I can't even imagine being in a room with all my girlfriends that have boyfriends no. and we're all in serious relationships and we just go, all right, let's mix it up. No, it's so <laughs> crazy. And, and I've learned this concept recently that when you're an adult and you are told to do something that you don't want to do, something called your inner child comes out or your inner teenager. And that's basically when the inside of you starts stomping your feet and saying, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what I want. So I honestly believe that if you're put up against a wall, given an ultimatum for marriage, don't you think it would do the exact reverse effect of what you want? Well, that kind of happened to Tom and Katie from Vanderpump Rules. Because they're getting divorced. I am so sad about yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So if you guys know that we are big Vanderpump Rules, especially Sistine fans. Um, and Katie and Tom just got divorced. And honestly, did I ever think they would actually last this long? No. But am I really upset? Yeah. It, you know, it's one of those situations where no one was thinking throughout the entire show. I feel for her, though. Yeah. That because it she's work. made it very clear since the beginning of their relationship that she's wanted marriage and babies. Yeah. And if you didn't want that, don't string someone along to make them think that you're going to give that to them Wait, one does, day. does he not want kids? He never made it clear, at least on the show. See, I'm only seeing it from one point of view. But on the show, he never made it clear. And he always pushed it back and waited and waited. And What would you do? So let's just say you are in this ultimate. Like, would you make give your man an ultimatum? If you were in here, hell yeah, what? But what do you mean? I'm sitting here five years dating. I'm gonna say, what are we doing? Are we gonna either just talk about the idea of marriage? Are you totally against it? And if he's like, no, I'm not against it, I'm like, great, then let's start moving that way. And if not, I'm out like Speedy Gonzalez. But you know what? Okay, this is also part two of the question. So you give your man an ultimatum, right? He does not want to get married soon. He doesn't want kids soon, but you're really wanting it. And you're like, honey, it's either you're in or you're out. I'm leaving you or you marry me, right? Mm. And he says he wants to marry you. Mm. Do you think that you forcing him is already a sign that this isn't going to work out in the long run because you're making him do something he didn't want to do initially? See, yes and no. Because part of me is saying... If you didn't really want this in your heart of hearts on your own without me telling you to do this, then I don't believe that you'd really want it. Right. Mm -hmm. But then the other side of me is saying sometimes people just need a little bit of a push to see that there could be a possibility of something even greater. Mm -hmm. And so that's where because sometimes it's so difficult. It's difficult because a lot of people have the confidence and are very sure of their choices and aren't as indecisive. And then there are people that aren't as you know, decisive. And I'm certainly that person at some points. So I don't know. It just depends. I the know, idea of you... marriage honestly scares me. Do I want it? Yes. <laughs> but it's, it's, I feel like we hear more about unsuccessful marriages today than successful ones. And it's hard too, because we look at mom and dad and they're in like a really great, healthy, strong marriage. And I'm like, y'all, they're, they're just not built the same anymore. No. It's, it's different. You know what was interesting is that this girl on TikTok was talking about dating culture in LA and how people or even just relationships in the States versus everywhere else and everywhere else, but dating Italy or Germany or whatever, it's much more romantic. And here it's just that there's no more yeah. romance. I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying that it's a hopeless for everybody. And, what happened to like Mr. Know? Suave, like picking you up on a moped with a baguette and a bottle of wine and holding a flower in his teeth? What? Call me Bella. Bella. <laughs> Bellissima. No, I don't understand. I want someone to come knocking on my door with some flowers, pick me up. We do something super cute and romantic, doesn't need to be expensive, and just romance. You. Yeah. What happened to romance? I think maybe people are afraid of romance because they think they'll get shut down or it's corny. But I feel like we've lost that with our generation. Yeah. Everyone loves romance. I, I maybe you you're not a touchy feely person, but it's the thought, mm -hmm. it's the appreciation, it's the effort that effort. you put into it. It's the effort. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's so weird. I mean, I, I mean, it's not the same for me now, but it does take though when it comes because I was scared of marriage too. I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do it anytime soon. I still am like, I'm one of those people I want to figure out who I am first before yeah. even jumping into anything like that. But 
it really just takes like a person or one person to change the entire mindset. Well, let me ask you this because I could easily flip the script because I know some people are watching this and saying, well, what about you guys? Aren't you romantic? Sophia, what do you do for your boyfriend that you romance him? (laughs) Um, Because it could go both ways. I would consider myself the romantic. Yeah. You know what I I am? I'm very, I would say I'm romantic with my words. Like I I tell Mm. the way I express myself if I, because how I show I care about you is showing you by giving you advice or being there for you or being like a mother for you. And so, yes, because he wants to date his mother. Nah, yeah, he wants to date his mom, obviously. <laughs> but that's just the way I show affection and warmth and maybe putting an effort into the dates I do. But like, it's as a girl, I think it's just more showing affection, like physically and emotionally. And that's how I do it. I just express myself once yeah. I'm comfortable. I like let loose. See, how do you do it? See, I, I like to make them fall in love with food because my mom taught me the fastest way. What have way. you ever cooked for a oh, guy? a lot. One time. No, no, no. Oof. Like at least once a week. And that's a lot of work, by the way. Going to the market, picking out a menu, which by the way, here's a little life hack. I never knew what to pair with what. Say if I was cooking a steak, I'm like, okay, well, what vegetables complement? I have no idea. I would just go on a restaurant menu that I liked and mm-hmm. I would literally copy an exact dish with like, if it had grilled leeks and like sauteed carrots and mushroom on the side, then that's exactly. That's smart. Yeah. So that's a little tip. So my mom taught me that the fastest way to a man's heart is through, through his stomach. stomach. Yeah. So if you feed them, they'll love you. You also heard that <laughs> trend uh, that if you go on a date with a guy and it's an adrenaline rush date, that he'll associate the adrenaline with love. And so he'll fall in love with you faster. So I have to go on a roller coaster on a first date? No, so there was a study that showed (laughs) that if you go on a date with someone and you associate it with, yeah, with good food and something that builds up the intensity with the other person Mm -hmm. and you're having this experience with them that is exciting and it's a rush and it's uh, an adrenaline, Mm -hmm. yeah, they're going to associate that whole feeling of the roller coaster that did all the work to the girl because she was there for the experience. That's interesting. I have another tidbit for you. Uh huh. I heard that I didn't make this up. When you go on a first date or a second date with someone and you get all nervous and we get what we call butterflies in our stomach and we're thinking, oh my God, I'm so excited. We automatically associate the butterfly feeling with excitement. But I heard that is your body telling you something's not right and that the person you're with is not right for you. Mm-hmm. Like what if you what if you just changed your mindset cuz it could save a lot of people a lot of time. Yeah. What if you just switched your mindset to saying why am I feeling so anxious right now? This something isn't right. Yeah. It no, it could true. be Ted Bundy. It could be Ted Bundy. Yeah. That's true. The butterflies you feel the romance. It's just them saying it's Ted Yeah. But you know, it's interesting because we talked about this the other day about things we notice early on in relationships or dating that we're like, okay, that could be a red flag. And you feel this gut thing in your stomach and you go, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. He, he answers the phone a lot during dinner. It's fine. Or whatever it is. You know, like there's this, I, I remember going out with someone and I, he told me something that just made my stomach drop for a second and I went, why did it feel that way? And I didn't, re- I didn't really as- like recognize it or associate it with anything. And I thought, you know, I'm just overthinking it because I, I, I admit it, I have anxiety sometimes. But I just thought, and then that was the thing that ended what we were doing. And so, listen, this is where we heard this from. There's a dating expert named Matthew Hussey, and Sophie and I would die to have him come on the podcast one day. I've tried. We will try again. We were, we were young and naive back then. We're yeah. legit now. We, we weren't legit then, and we're legit now. Well, in our heads. Do you see the color behind here? You guys, we're in a legit studio. Look at our head. We're wearing headphones. We're real deal. Real <laughs> deal. Anyway, this guy, he is wildly popular. By the way, I Googled him the other day. He used to date Camila Cabello. How random is that? Whoa. I know. But it must have been a very healthy relationship because he just nails relationships. But also... Why did they break up if it was so healthy? Well, that's why we'll ask him on the show. 
But anyway, <laughs> this is what he said. So if you guys ever need advice about anything, he's the guy to go to on YouTube. But he said once, red flags in the beginning of the relationship that a lot of people see, you often ignore them because you are just looking at this person with a rose colored lens and you're like, you know what? Like, I'll make excuses for them. I like them enough. Like, why would I? Oh, that's dis- so funny that I said that. And that was like the. Yeah. You're like, why would I discontinue yeah. a relationship for something so small and minor? Like you always are just kind of making excuses, looking past it because you're just so excited about it. Mm-hmm. But those red flags that you ignored in the beginning of the relationship are the same reason or. Yeah. The same reason yeah. that you end up breaking up with that person at the end of the relationship. Mm-hmm. And if you could just avoid it altogether yeah and you know stick with your confidence and what your gut is telling you like early things i would say that you would you know it's the hardest one is when the red flags are stuff that you think are positives and Mm -hmm. they end up being the thing that completely implodes the relationship like Mm -hmm. love bombing for example if you guys don't know what love bombing is, it is when you get an excessive amount of texting gifts. I'm going to look up the um, correct definition of love bombing. You, they, they ask to spend time with you and not friends and they are... Oh, this is an interesting definition. Mm. Love bombing is a tactic some people use to manipulate someone into jumping into a relationship sooner and more seriously than they'd like to. It's typically done by people who have a history of being in abusive relationships are narcissists or have an anxious attachment style. Well, it's so the point is that they're trying to make you get as close and intimate with them as possible by you sharing all these intimate details with them and they them responding with such and then you adoration get a, then you get and love and then you get attached and so a lot of the things they do that are bad are going to go unnoticed or whatever. And so that's a sign like you you would think That that sounds great. Who doesn't want to have attention and love and compliments and gifts? I want it. I want it. But, you know, at the same time, you got to remember that a relationship is a slow growing one. Like you Mm -hmm. don't become, I mean, unless you met your best friend and just instantly clicked and like it just from then on out. But no, you had to get to know each other. You had to figure out what you like and don't like and see if that works. But that's when they almost become like the perfect person in the beginning, but they don't share a lot about themselves. They give, make you talk the entire time because they're so interested. And oh God, you know what? We are the perfect candidate for that because we love talking about ourselves. I know. I'm like, Hey, what else do I know? <laughs> I How, can't shut up. I like chicken soup. I don't like it with my noodles. You know why? Cause it ruins the flavor. I can tell you more about that. Why do people put pasta in soup when it literally just becomes so mushy? Like, why? Yeah. I don't mind, like, matzo ball. No, but I don't like foods that feel like they were already chewed for me. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? And that's, like, what a chicken noodle soup is. I feel like that's how you feel about bread pudding. Disgusting. She hates bread pudding. Okay. I love bread pudding. If you guys like bread pudding, I challenge you to watch someone actually prepare bread pudding. It's so gross. They are soaking bread in water, making balls in their hands with the dough and sticking it on a tray that's disgusting it's a little little gross food that's man i still eat it it's so gross i'll still have it it still tastes good but back to what we're saying i just think that if you guys are feeling those butterflies or something that feels a little off in the beginning of your relationship i'm just kidding run dump him hide (laughs) No, no no just just recognize it and maybe just flag that just put a little... You know what, Sophia? I have to say, we had such an incredible arc in this podcast. We went from giving such toxic advice like text your ex on their birthday as what? a way to slide back We're in growing. to now giving you pointers on red flags. We're growing up. Wow. I know. We really this? are. Speaking of growing up, what I've realized recently is now that we live apart from each other... Mm-hmm. And we are in separate relationships and you're traveling a lot and I'm traveling a lot. We're barely in the same city at the same time. And if we are, we have our separate plans. It's kind of weird when you grew up so incredibly close because you, Scarlett, and I are just like thick as thieves growing Mm -hmm. up. We did everything together to now as you're getting older you start to do very few things together, only things that are required for an entire family to be there. I know. I mean... 
is like you and I have a different kind of I think situation. Lately, it's been a little bit chaotic. Like I've been, we've been just gone every other weekend, not with each other. But mm. yeah, I don't know. That's like one of the sad things about growing up is we used to share a room, all three of us together, and now we're just yeah. We you guys, we used to share a room. This is a funny story. So Sophie and I had twin beds next to each other, and then Scarlett was about four years old, mm-hmm. maybe. She felt really left out, so she got my mom bought her an air mattress. Blew it up, put it in front of our two beds. So she slept on an air mattress for yeah. three or four years. And then on top of that, we had three Pomeranians in a cage in the bedroom. So we had three Pomeranians and three girls for about yeah. five or six years for a long in time. one bedroom. I know. And it, it's a different transition because we're all so close. But I, in this time of my I feel like it's really exciting to do this stuff. It's hard. Because I think I have had to, and I feel like you've had to also figure out who you are more as your own person and like what you aspire and what you dream of and who you want to date and who you want to be with. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Cause like, I feel like I'm, we're like glued at the hip for a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And we always say we're like dependent on each other. And then now not being together, we're like, okay, now we have to, yeah, take a step back. I'm only going to see you on holidays. But you've been in Palm Beach alone a lot. Let me tell you. I finally get it. I'm sick of middle child syndrome. It's something that I've dealt with my whole life. Neglected, ignored. I'm not the problematic child. I'm the easiest child, mom says. So I think I'm the favorite right now. I'm full, full 110%. 110%. I think I'm the easiest right now. You're the easiest right yeah. now. Are you joking? <laughs> Sophia. Sistine, this entire month, you think I haven't been the easiest child? Exactly. Give me the credit. Usually I, I, I always admit when it's like me off, I win today. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was saying. You said that you don't like middle child syndrome because now you get a lot of attention being yep. alone in Palm Beach. Yes, I like being alone. I don't like when you and Scarlett are around because I get so much love from mom and dad and it's amazing. So I just need to figure out a way to secretly assassinate the both of you. Or we just never come to Florida and you just stay here with mom and dad forever. I could do that too. Hmm. 40 years old living with mom and dad. Sounds like the perfect life. You sound jealous. I am mm-hmm. a-okay not doing that. Okay, should we do unsolicited advice? Yeah, let's go into it. Do you want to read it? Yes. This person is from Humbled Hud 24. I absolutely love the podcast channel. Keep up the wonderful work that you both have been doing. Thank you. My one question to you both is, how do you handle your mental health? Can we start? Sure. I love this topic <laughs> because I think that it's something that is so, so, so stigmatized and every single person in the world deals with it in their own way, whether in it's extreme or it's very subtle. And for me, when, because I look, Sissy and I are totally different people. The way she approaches it is different from how I approach it. But as I've always said on the show, I'm very vocal about how I feel. And when I'm feeling off or I'm feeling scared, I'm one of those people that I don't let myself sit and be sad or anxious long enough for me to really feel horrible. And so I'm always expressing myself and going, I need help or I need to talk to someone. And one thing I've learned, because this will dive into it a little bit more, is that when you're feeling anxious or sad or whatever your mental health thing is, do not feel like you should push away from the people that love you, that want to help you, and you should lean in. Because I think that when you're in a mindset that is scary and chaotic and you have absolutely no control and you feel like you're the only one dealing with it, you start to isolate yourself and think that the best way to be is to be completely alone. And sometimes that's actually the worst thing to do because now you're sitting with yourself and you're even sadder and your mind is racing. And how do you handle it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's for me, being open and talking to my loved ones and not pushing the way and leaning into them has always been a really big help for me. And if you don't have that in your life, maybe you find that one friend or you go online and you find that person, that specialist that will do that for you because there's a lot of groups, there's a lot of resources out there that you can do and you can look up and I mean, and they will open 
their arms completely for you. So that's how I handle it. How do you? But you also journal. No, I, yeah, but I don't, that's not for my anxiety or my mental health. I just do it because I enjoy it to think about memories and I just write down my emotions. But, but when I'm having a, my mental health thing, I talk, Mm -hmm. I talk to my family. Mm -hmm. I talk to my, talk to you. I talk to dad. I talk to, if I need a therapist, a therapist, but Mm -hmm. I'm just saying what I do for that is leaning into people. Yeah. I pretty much have the same answer. Mental health is uh, something new that I've started to understand a little bit better because I always thought that I didn't struggle with mental health because I would hear stories and see what I thought mental health would look like. I'm like, well, I don't fit into that mold of it. And that was a very ignorant way to think. I just didn't understand it. And I was just naive to it. And now that I've sort of taken a step back and realized that, hold on, I I am struggling with something. And once I admitted to myself that I'm struggling, the best way for me to release it is confiding in those that I love. The old me would just bottle it inside and thought, okay, if I didn't address it, the problem didn't exist, but it just made everything so much worse. And sometimes my favorite way to approach it is even if I don't want a response because it is really good to talk to loved ones, but that also comes with feedback and opinions on what they think is best for you. And sometimes you really know what's best for you, but it just helps to get that weight off your shoulders and just let it out. So I like to just talk and be like, I don't want a response. Just let me cry, Mm -hmm. scream. I'm going to say ridiculous things that you're probably not going to agree with, but not having a response or judgment back. I think is really great. Just being a sounding board. Just a sounding board. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think if you know someone that is struggling with something and you don't really know what to do, be that sounding board and say you will be that sounding board. I think sometimes when you, people have a really hard time thinking they're going to be judged. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the reason why people don't open up. And I think that's like why sometimes you didn't open up. And um, I, I think I now understanding it more, I want to give everyone on this planet like more of a break if someone's having a bad day or they're snapping at you and you're taking it personally like why are you getting mad at me what did i do to you probably nothing but it's important to understand that every single person is going through something Mm -hmm. and that's not a way that i used to think and everyone's struggling whether you can see it on the outside or not whether someone is more vulnerable and open to talking about it or someone literally will act like nothing's wrong everyone has shit yeah so just be kind yeah and i that just be kind but also if you are the person that's struggling don't also think that that's an excuse to be rude to people as as well i think like that it can go both ways i you know i just think be open be honest and you know lean in and Know that there are people out there for you that want to help and want to talk to you about it because it's an ongoing thing. It's never going to fully disperse forever and ever and ever. I mean, just like everything in life. But I just think that the earlier you open up and the faster that you want to get it fixed or at least managed is going to be the best thing for you. And you want to be happy and healthy. I agree. And if you want your unsolicited advice answered, make sure you go to the Apple podcast page, go to the Unwax podcast, go to ratings and review, write your question in the ratings and review section. Five that stars. The, that is the only way we are going to answer it. And yes, please give us five stars. Or six, if that's even possible. So I did something kind of random yesterday and I just put a poll up on Instagram and I, because I really like hearing from you guys and answering your questions directly because I just feel closer and mm-hmm. I just feel like we can grow as an unwaxer community. Mm-hmm. So I put a poll up and I just said questions for the girls and you guys actually came up with some really solid questions. But can I also say something that just happened recently is someone came up to me and said that they, them and the roommates listened to our podcast. It was like a group of girls. What's and up girls? I know. And you know what's it's so interesting? I feel like you feel the same way. I still don't think anyone is listening to this show. I'm sorry. I know you probably all are like, Sophia, come on, Sistine, you guys are whack. We, I genuinely think we have 10 listeners. <laughs> I 
<laughs> and I feel like nine of them are men that are in their 80s. Like, I don't, and the other ones are mom. <laughs> and, uh, the last one is mom. Mom's the only girl. Scott's girl, not listening. But like, it's just, it, it's like. It is crazy because sometimes we'll just, yeah. see people come up off the street or we'll say my friend or my sister or my roommate. They listen. And oh we my go, God. It's so bad because we're always like, what? Really? what? Why? That's amazing. But like, thank you. Because I, that's our goal. I mean, especially when it's young girls or girls that are our age, it makes my day so much. And then I think about everything I've said on the show. I'm like, oh my God, I've given horrible advice. I think horrible. I hope it's just for entertainment purposes for y'all. But sometimes like today we gave good ones. But yeah, I, we really, really appreciate everybody listening. And we Riding love in. when you girls come up and guys, I'm like, if you're not creepy, um, come up and you say that you listen to it. It makes us really happy. And also, we love reading your DMs. We answer pretty much all of them. So yeah, yeah. Actually, the, the guy that was making my smoothie the other day said he listens to the show. I was like, dude, thank you. Also, great oh, smoothie. My waiter <laughs> gave me a free dessert because he says he likes the podcast. Come on, yeah, <laughs> come on. Can I you, loved it. By okay. the way, give us free stuff. I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> by oh way, my if God. you're like. I don't know, like work at Sephora and you just want to give me a ton of stuff. Like, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Or just like free cake from Cheesecake Factory. Or just an envelope full of cash. We'll yeah. take it we'll all. We'll take it anything. I take um, gift cards too. So let's start with these questions. Amazon, please. The first one is, I think actually I wrote this one down for you because you've been going to New York quite a bit. This person asked, what's the coolest must-see place in Manhattan? I wasn't really in Manhattan that much, to okay, be Okay, well, let's just say New York. Coolest must-place see in New York mm. that you've experienced. Okay. You know what I did recently for the first time that was really interesting? We both hadn't done it was go to the 9-11 museum. The memorial. Yeah. Yeah. I did that last time I was there. And it was wow. And you know what? It, unbelievably sad, of course. And I think for me going and seeing that just kind of reminded me. It, it's it, I don't know how lucky you are and how fragile life is. And it's just I... I love that they put so much work and love and memory into this memorial place. And it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful and it's tragic, but it is like, it really just shifts your mindset for a bit. And I definitely have recommend going. Okay, good. Yeah. What do you do if you're in an awkward situation and don't know how to act or respond? Okay, you do two things. It's really simple. First, you go into the robot and then you transition by walking out of the room doing the moonwalk. And that's how you leave an awkward situation. If you're asking me personally, I uh, keep talking until it gets even more awkward. And then I realize, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. And then I usually say, I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, well, here's a real answer from me. When I'm in an awkward situation, I don't really know what to do. 99% of the time, I will go to the nearest bathroom, sit in the largest stall, FaceTime Sophia for about 20 minutes, which kills 20 minutes of my night. That is true. But then people also think that you're taking a number two. It's better than sitting hey. having a horrible conversation <laughs> rather than thinking I'm pooping. Okay, perfect. That's fine. So when did you realize you were an adult? Mm. I know the answer to this. When I started paying taxes. Yeah. I never thought I would actually have to as a child. And now that I do, it sucks. Uh, I also think when someone IDs me, like I usually never get ID'd. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. And now I mean, like when even when I'm 25, like I usually don't get ID. I, I look pretty young, but then when I, I've been getting it recently and now I'm thinking, oh. Or when you buy a house plant for yourself, that's pretty adult. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty adult when you're moving in by yourself. Any advice for people putting too much pressure on themselves? Oh, I just had this talk the other day. Is it going to make you feel better or put the pressure away? No. Right? Mm -hmm. So just try to snap yourself out of it. We all do it. Everyone's human. But just remind yourself you're doing everything you can. And if you don't feel like you're doing everything you can, the only way to change that is by putting in some action. And also, let me just say this, because I was, I had this, um, I've always struggled with putting pressure on myself a lot, and that's probably where a lot of my anxiety comes from. And I was having a talk the other day, and I was just thinking about, first of all, I'm 25, but also whatever age you are, what is anybody else doing right now? What is your friend doing? What is your other friend doing? What is your sister doing? What is your brother doing? What's your third friend doing? Yeah. What's your third friend doing? If you have a third friend. What's no, your but, dog doing? But really think about what those people are doing and are they doing 10,000 times better? Don't compare yourself to the Kylie Jenners or 
the Whitney Herds or the Elon Musk. It's that just are the point zero 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 one percent. You know, if you're comparing yourself to people that are just an unrealistic standard to compare yourself to, I mean, you're just setting yourself up to fail. Yeah, and I understand that it's easy to compare yourself to people on TikTok and all that stuff, but a lot of those content creators, that is their job. They are constantly making that stuff, so it, it seems like their life is totally perfect, and maybe they have a good balance. But do not compare yourself because their life is their life. Your life is your life. You know, whenever you put pressure on something, whether it's a boo-boo or, you know, a relationship, what does pressure feel like? It's painful. It doesn't feel good. It's co- uncomfortable. So don't put pressure on your heart. Mm-hmm. Okay. <sighs> that was so deep. Uh, who instigates most of the fights between you guys? I'd say it's 50% each of us. Yeah, I feel like it's it just depends. Split. Yeah, I Depends mean, on the morning. Depends who got a better cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. And then it goes from there. I'm such... It's kind of funny. He saw me uh, making my coffee. I'm like very specific with my coffee now. Speaking mm-hmm. of coffees. Do you guys froth your coffees? Your creamers and stuff? No. I love how it's foaming on top. And I hate foam on I my coffee. Because first of all, you have to swallow like four gulps of foam. But it tastes great. It's before you flavor. can even get to the coffee and you're like just drinking like foamy milk. It's my, so gross. My coffee tastes like a slight, like a, like a milkshake a little bit. And it's perfect. Jeez. It's such a nice way to wake up. What are your favorite makeup products? Okay. I feel like the best way to answer this question is with another question. Mm. If you were on a deserted island and you could bring three makeup products, what would they be? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Easily. I'd bring a cream blush and the one I would bring right now, because I changed my favorite makeup products 24 seven. So this is just as of now, I think for both of us, I would bring the rare beauty, happy liquid Mm. blush because that is so pigmented and it lasts forever Two concealer specifically Anastasia Beverly Hills concealer. That shit is thick and it is good because I have dark circles and a lot of little pimples and I need to get rid of them. And then three, I would say, my brow gel. Actually, just kidding. Just kidding. I would bring a lip mask. I'm so specific with hydrating my lips. Mm -hmm. And I think I would bring one of those. I I don't have like a specific one, but one that is a pigmented lip oil Mm -hmm. or lip gloss. Okay. Yeah. I would agree with the brow. I would bring a tinted brow gel. I love a fluffy brow. Two, I would bring which I probably put on every single day with no makeup, is the Charlotte Tilbury uh, cream blush, like little stick wand. Uh, It's like a highlighter and blush and what? Pinkgasm. Great name. And then three, I would probably bring like a very dark brown, maybe the NARS stripped down lip liner. Uh, I love a giant. You're on a deserted island and you bring. Yeah, I'm going to have some DSLs on that. Yeah, island. I was like, going to say like, I... some thick lips because <laughs> you know what? Like if you don't like sometimes I will. This sounds insane, but I love just putting a little bit of something on before I leave the door. And if I don't feel like doing a full beat with foundation and, and blush and bronzer and all that crap, if I just do my brows, a little bit of blush and a sick lip liner, it literally looks like you're wearing a full face. Yeah, it does. It does. So it that's pulls what I'm going together. with. Okay. Someone asked, dating coworkers. <laughs> That's going to be a no from me, dog. I have never experienced that. So I don't know. From all of the um, rom coms I've watched, it ended up turning out good, but the middle part's not that great. Tell me this. Riddle me this. Mm-hmm. Why on every rom com, when the coworkers date, they have the most steamy, sexual, hot love scenes because you've it's ever not seen? Allowed. And it's like, why? Because you work in the same office building. You guys are both so extra, like extremely sexually compatible and kinky. It's just, it's, it's, it's so wrong. It's right. Okay. I just say <laughs> no, unless it's the love of your life. It's going get You have to make messy. sure. You, you, you use the questions in the beginning that I asked, do they support you? Do they love you? And do they? <laughs> Okay, on the first date, did you ever have a guy respond with my girlfriend instead of my ex? Is this a red flag? One trillion percent. Have you ever had that? No. Thank God. I have. That is a huge red flag. I'm sorry. I mean, unless they broke up with them a day ago. Yeah, I mean, 
I've ne- I've never even said that. Like, I've never said, "Oh yeah, my my boyfriend talking to a guy." That's- I've had I've had a guy say my girlfriend, then quickly correct himself and say, "Oh, uh, my ex." And I was like, "Is she your ex? Do you still when did you her? guys break up? You obviously still care about her if you're calling her your girlfriend." Red flag. So many red flags. Okay. What is your go-to comfort movie slash self-care routine after you've had a really bad day? Yes. This question. Yes. Go ahead. All right. Number one, I am putting on, you know, how in every closet, you just have like really ugly sweatpants that are so baggy and comfortable, but probably have old stains on them and you can't wear them in public. Yeah. Those comfort sweatpants sweatshirt duo. Then I'm putting on my giant fuzzy socks. Mm -hmm. Then I'm probably going to put on some really bad reality TV right now. I'm on that summer house kick, but actually it's great TV to be honest. All right. Then I'm going to get some snacks. I'm loving pop chips right now. I'm loving. What else do we like? We love rice cakes. The cinnamon ones from cinnamon rice cakes. Yeah. Those little ones. Those Those are are good. Uh, And I will just make a little arrangement. Of, of chips and crap and candy in front of me. And I will just sit on my couch with a giant weighted blanket, probably a heating pad and hibernate. That's what I'm doing. You know, I did um, a couple of days, actually, it was a couple of months ago. This was like my favorite night ever. I put on the ugly sweatpants, pull over, put on a headband, did a, fa- a facial mask, a brightening one. Yeah, I love masks. Got my favorite food. I got whatever it was. And then I put on the Princess Bride. Oh, and God, it was I so romantic that. and I, fun. Or you watch the holiday if it's the holidays. See, no, I would not want to watch for romantic comedy. I love romantic And comedies. I also don't want to, like, make myself feel better by doing facials and stuff. Because if I'm in a bad mood, well, I'm, I'm avoiding mood. all mirrors. Well, that's different. That's if you're in a bad mood. Well, she said if you have a bad day. Yeah, you make yourself feel better by making yourself look better. Drink a lot of wine. All right. Get drunk. <laughs> Next question, Sophia. Do you guys think you'll go on a podcast tour? Yes, we hope so. We have always talked about this. We would love to go live and travel around and see you guys in person. Obviously, that is uh, a goal, but it and we haven't planned anything. Well, let me ask you guys this. Would you show up? Yeah, that's honestly my fear is back to what I said <laughs> that I don't feel like anyone is listening. Would like would this have people come? <laughs> Sophia and I have been wanting to do a live show or go on tour yeah. so badly, but how horrible would it be if no one bought a ticket? That's what I'm saying. It's like I so want I to do this and I feel like maybe we wait know? till our podcast grows a little bit more. I don't, I don't know. know. Okay. Um, okay. What is your advice for moving on from a toxic friendship? Ooh, friendships are hard because sometimes they're harder than a breakup if they were a really good friend to you or you guys were very close. The only way to move on is just take it day by day. There's no specific tool or something you can do. I would, I don't know, handle it the same way as breaking up with your significant other, I guess. Moving on from a toxic friendship. Mm. Well, you recognize it's toxic in the first place. Step one. So that's pretty good. To, you just do. Yeah, there's nothing. I'm you can sorry. Do. That's it. Like, it, it, just like everything takes time. And guess what? Now you just got rid of someone that was. Bad, and maybe and now you're gonna get someone that's good. And maybe you know you could take this opportunity uh, to reach out to a friend that you normally don't, but they've always been very sweet to you, and you could see what would come out of that friendship. And guess what? The re- like, you know how you move on? You become friends with us, and you listen to the show. We're your built-in friend. Yeah, we are your friends. I love this next question. Celebrity crush. Celebrity crush. Can I guess yours and you can guess mine? Okay. Okay, your celebrity crush. You have like five. You have so many too. I have like two main ones. Oh, I, I think don't even I- know either one. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. I've said them so many times. Give me a hint. Okay. One, I liked him when he was younger. Peter Pan. No. Oh. Celebrity crush. That's he's a cartoon. <laughs> no, the little boy. Ew, Sistine. But when you were younger, tw- you said. Uh, this is a celebrity crush. It's not my childhood <laughs> crush. That's different. Um, okay, yours is Kilgan Murphy, and it's Jason Momoa. And Thomas it's, Shelby. Yeah, and it's, um, uh, what's his name from Crazy Rich Asians? Henry Goulding. It's Henry Goulding, Jason Momoa, and Kilgan Murphy. Uh, okay. 
Yours is Rob Lowe and Tom Hardy. I've said this to you so many times. Why do you like Rob Lowe? I said the young version. Well, that doesn't count. You I have love to, you. Have that's to take also him. all comfort movies. That is Saint Elmo's Fire. I like, you got to take them as they are today. And okay, I would Tom take Hardy. all three of Tom mine. Hardy. Tom Hardy. Yeah, he is. By the way, nice. actually, actually, comfort movie. This means war. He is. Chris Pine, Tom Hardy, and Reese Witherspoon. They're stupid. Tell me right now, that's not the hottest trio ever. And they're, they're so hot. Oh, Tom Hardy, I can't. Oh my God, Venom. Don't even. He go. is so spicy. I know. In that movie. No, Venom. I, yeah, y'all are probably laughing at me. I love it. Yeah, Venom. <laughs> yo, even, Ven- when, yo. even, even, <laughs> yo, no, hold up. Even when he is a disgusting, like, slime monster, I'm still I'm like, still like do you wanna- you're getting cute. <laughs> so, I would totally still go out with you. Because, because you remember in the first movie when, like, Venom, the monster, kissed Tom Hardy's ex. Yeah. So I was like, okay. I was like, right, right. But wait, <laughs> the fact that I watched Venom 2 and then watched Venom 1, because I was like, you know, I'll just see this. I bought it on my computer. I'm going to watch it. Tonight. It's so And I told her, I was like, hey, you got to watch this show, this movie Venom. And she goes, okay, whatever. And I, I was like, I don't know if she's going to like it. She doesn't love fi- like sci-fi shit. She came out. She was like, that was the best movie. Literally the best okay, movie. Okay, we're like huge Venom fans. Obsessed. <laughs> Obsessed. Watch. Everyone be like, that is the cheesiest we one. We are going to Comic Con and dressing as Venom. I love Venom. I, I love, love Tom Hardy. Him. No, no, no. Like, I literally have a crush on the monster. I have a crush on the slime you monster. Take, you can take Venom. I'll take Tom. I'll take either version of Tom. I don't care. I'm not picky. Oh, my God. I am obsessed. Oh my god! And you know you I are. like Tom too because like he kind of has like a little like snaggle tooth. I oh god, oh, he's not, like he's not he's, he's so rugged. <laughs> like he's like a backyard boy, you know. He's <laughs> chopping axe. Oh my god! And then he saw him in uh, Peaky Blinders. <sighs> <laughs> when your two crushes collide in one scene, this was the best show ever. <laughs> like, I think I Killing and Murphy, Tom Hardy. I think I. Combusted. <laughs> if he did a call map sound, I would, <gasps> I got chills. Okay, we gotta stop. We're so this is the longest answer to anything. Wait, I'm getting hot and bothered. <laughs> Move on. Next question. <laughs> One skincare product you can't live without: sunscreen, <laughs> moisturizer. Oh no, I'm still thinking about no, venom. Wait, I'm sorry, no, I can't stop thinking about venom. Does he wear sunblock? I don't know. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need. He's he doesn't him. burn. He's too hot. Already. Oh my god! I think I like him more than Deadpool because I love. They're kind of similar with their their lingo. Deadpool is like ten notches down. Thank you, Venom. Deadpool Venom. <laughs> like they both have the same vibe of being funny, but just Tom Hardy is funny without being funny. Yeah. Oh my god. Nate. Whereas Deadpool's like always making jokes. We get I know. it. I know. Why does Ryan Reynolds play the same character in in every every movie? movie? Free Guy, he was basically the same character. Kinda. Yeah, he was in that one with Jason Statham. He was the same character. What's another movie? There's Deadpool. And then there's... He's always like the the, quirky, funny, cute guy. Just Friends or Best Friends? Yeah, Just Friends. Just Friends. But Tom Hardy doesn't do that. (laughs) Tom Hardy is a shapeshifter. <laughs> Every time he's on the screen, you don't even know who he is because he's so enveloped in the character. So is that you can't even tell. So, so is Jason is... Momoa. Not really. Yeah, he plays Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, but he looks the same in every film. Yeah, he, well, because he, because he, how, where do you, how do you cast him? You can't cast him as like the sweet old man. Like, He's a Targaryen. <laughs> oh, wait, you know what I also just watched, uh, speaking of sci-fi, I watched in the plane was that new Spider-Man movie. And by the way, I've never... I love how you just said that new Spider-Man movie as if it didn't do over a billion dollars Well, the thing is, is that I I don't watch all the Spider-Man like in the Spidey universe. Like, What did you think? Tom Holland is super cute. He's a great actor. Tom Holland. That's another Tom that's very cute. I'll leave you guys with this. (laughs) Many moons ago when I just joined Raya and I was 18. Oh, gosh. Tom Holland. Of course, this is before... (laughs) All of his girlfriends and his ex-girlfriends was on Raya. He was. And what did I do? 
I don't think my my finger almost went <laughs> through the phone screen. I hit yes so hard. I did not get a yes back. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Why would Tom Holland Yeah, want why me? would Tom Holland? But does Tom Hardy? Here's the thing. Probably not either. I just want an intervention for the Toms. Should we just put all Toms in a room? What's and, another Tom? And Tom Schwartz. The Tom Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> what a combo okay this uh ending was actually hilarious but also just whatever but we love you guys so much thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of EMI. okay we're so annoying we love you guys we'll see you next tuesday adios